Number 19, classify the following as either an acid-base reaction or oxidation-reduction reactions, and then we have letter B. So we need to figure out if this whole equation is falling under the category of an acid-base reaction or is it an oxidation-reduction reaction. Okay, so the main difference between acid-base and oxidation-reduction reactions is that in oxidation-reduction, just know that your atom's oxidation states, I just put ox states, oxidation states will change across the board, meaning that you'll have a charge for one atom on the left-hand side, and it will not be the same charge as the same atom on the right-hand side. They will change. For acid-base reactions, Acid base is just a fancy way for saying a double displacement or a double replacement reaction. So there is no change in your oxidation states. So the oxidation states don't change. That's the main difference. That's the big difference. If you could get that in your head, um, you know, you'll get all these types of questions correct. So all we have to do is just use our trend, right? or do the crisscross method and our knowledge of oxidation states to figure out what the individual oxidation states for each element is, and then just see if they change from reactant to product or they don't change. Let's start off with Na. Now, Na, and I'll put that over here, right? First of all, I don't care how many I have, Right, so I could get rid of this too. That has nothing to do with oxidation states. And I don't care if it's a solid or a liquid. You're just focusing on either an element or the compound. So sodium is by itself, right? You should know that any element by itself or living as a diatomic always has the charge of zero, okay? Right, there's no charge in the upper right-hand corner of this single element. So the charge is zero. So just know that this is a zero and not a oxygen. Maybe I'll put like a slash here signifying that it's a zero just so that when you guys look back at it, right? So sodium by itself, zero charge. And I'll put the charge up here. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one, right? HCl. I don't care that there's two of them and I don't care that they're aqueous. So I'm just going to say HCl. Now, we've done tons of problems figuring out how to find these oxidation states, right? So just look at the subscripts. There's one hydrogen and one chlorine, right? You crisscross those back up to get the charges, and then you just check to see if it matches on your trend. Once you get familiar at this, guys, it will take literally a couple of seconds. So this one crisscrossed back up top to chlorine, telling me that the chlorine was a negative one charge. And I say negative one because remember, the atoms in the back of the compound are the negative. The ones in the front are the positive. That's just standard notation. And then this one crisscrosses back up to hydrogen, telling me that it was a plus one. So I got H being a plus one charge and chlorine being a minus one when they made HCl. So that's what I'll write up top here. I'll say plus one for Hydrogen and minus one for oxygen. Sorry, not oxygen, chlorine. Now let's do NaCl. And just remember, guys, always just check to see if this makes sense on your trend. But it does, right? Hydrogen's up here. It generally wants to be a plus one, so that checks out. And then chlorine is all the way on over here. It's in the negative one group, so that checks out as well. Okay, NaCl, I have one sodium, I have one chlorine. Use those to crisscross back up. This one told me that the chlorine was a negative one, and just like we said before, that makes sense. And then the one on the bottom for the chlorine crisscrosses up, telling me that the sodium was a plus one. So Na was a plus one, Oop. And the Cl was a minus one. Okay, let's write that down. Plus one and minus one. 
And now let's just finish it out, right? We just have little old H2. I don't care that it's a gas, right? And just know that any element that's in its diatomic state, this is a diatomic, right? Di means two in chemistry, so I'll write that down. Di means two. Atomic means atom, right? So anytime that you see a atom being in its diatomic state, when you have two of them, the rules apply just as if it was a single element. There was no charge in the upper right-hand corner, so it's a zero. And maybe I'll put a slash here, zero. So zero, boop. Now we just compare what the charges were for each element across the board and see if they changed or not. So the first one was sodium, right? Sodium over here, sodium went from a zero charge all the way, oh gosh, <laughs> all the way to what? It was a plus one. Oh boy. That's a change, right? Zero to a plus one. The chlorines stayed the same, right? The Cl was a minus one here, and the Cl was a minus one here, so that doesn't change. But if you looked at the hydrogen, the hydrogen was a plus one on the reactant side, and it turned into a zero. That's a change as well. So maybe I'll just do that. Right, this one went from a plus one to a zero. If you spot out a change, you know what reaction it is. Only in oxidation reduction reactions will those oxidation states change. So since I saw a change here, this is a oxidation reduction reaction. Yay! Stay tuned for more uh, information on the oxidation reduction reaction. I think I, we have tons of questions coming up because you got to know more about oxidation reductions. But we're just getting our feet wet here. Just know that if they change, it's an oxidation reduction reaction. And yeah, that's it. All right. So what do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this helped. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you, if you would like to. That would help us out. And, you know, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, other than that, love you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.